What's going on guys? Today we are tearing apart the head to continue the build on the Honda Civic engine. started I want to show you guys a couple of updates on my dad's Hudson build and it's pretty exciting because it looks really sweet this is his engine right here it's huge looks like it would make a ton of horsepower makes like 150 I think uh, or 155 I think with this twin H setup but this is this is really cool um, this is his car right here just finished the wiring in the engine bay as well um, there's there's really not much wires but this is all completed and looks super good for those of you who haven't watched my previous video here's the engine that i have been working on this is the block um, it is completely assembled the bottom end is at least uh, i'm not really going to take it all apart but it has new pistons and rods and piston rings it's ready to go speed factory rods viterra pistons now we're going to go over here and work on the head we're going to go ahead and start tearing this thing down I'm going to take out the valve train here and then start working on the, the springs and retainers, getting those out so that we can lap the valves. So not entirely sure what happened here, but I am missing some of my footage. So really all you miss here is I take out the, the valve springs and retainers and keepers set that all aside and then i bring the head of the engine outside to clean off the surfaces where the exhaust manifold and intake manifold bolt up I need you here right next to me thoughts in my head racing we can't go on like this anymore i'm done with the games we're playing i'm over it yeah i gotta let you go So next we're going to go ahead and clean the valves. So I'm going to do something that I, I learned online, which is to take your valve and put it in the end of your drill like that. And then you can just take some brake cleaner and spray it on here. Also spray some on a Scotch-Brite pad like this. And then you can just hold the Scotch-Brite pad on here while you spin the drill and clean off your valve. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then uh, show you the final result. <laughs> Summer fun, summer fun. I saw you right up in the summertime, summertime. I tried to make you mine, it wouldn't work, put in work. I had to push you first, I lost my mind, went berserk. I feel like Okay, so about halfway through with the valves right now. Um, you can see the this set is finished. This set right here is not. They they look pretty good. They're gonna get the job done. The intake valves actually look really good, as you can see here. Um, it does take like the black finish off of them, which should be okay. And then uh, <clears throat> the exhaust side, there's still a tiny bit of buildup on there. Um, it's very minimal, but this is about as far as I can get off with a scotch bright pad. If I want to do better than this, then I'm going to have to use sandpaper, which I don't really feel like doing. At that point, I would rather just buy new valves, which I also don't feel like doing, so I'm going to use these. They should be fine. For example, though, here's an exhaust valve that isn't done yet. It looks horrible. And then if we compare that to one that has been done, um, you can see they look way different there. So there's way less buildup on here. Plus I'm gonna be lapping the valves, which is gonna help the seat. So the little tiny bit of buildup isn't really going to matter, but I'm just gonna go ahead and keep getting these as clean as I possibly can with the Scotch-Brite. And I did switch to carb cleaner. I should mention that, but I'm gonna go ahead and continue now. Vivian Westwood chain hanging right around my neck. Balenciaga case 44 when I step. Summer fun, summer fun. I saw you right up in the summertime. summertime. Yeah. But now I stay inside all the time. Wasting away, waiting for you to call one more time. Without you here, can't stay. What's up guys? I'm not sure where I left off in this video, but today we are going to be lapping valves. So I have half of this done already. Um, if you can see down here, these still have pitting in them. 
around there. The intake side looks pretty good. This is the exhaust side. Um, and then these are ones that I have already finished. So you can see there's no more pitting on the exhaust side here and the intake side looks a little bit better. Here is an example of two exhaust valves. This is one that I have not done yet. See how you can see all the pitting around there, around the edge. And then this is one that I have done. It looks much cleaner. So if we look at them side by side, that's what they look like. So we're gonna continue where I left off and I'm gonna show you exactly how I go about doing this. Most of you are gonna yell at me um, because I'm using power tools to do this, which you're probably told never to do, but I don't feel like being here all day and I also don't care what you have to say about it. Okay, so I start off by cleaning off this end right here as well as the suction cup that I'm using on this. So I use just a little bit of, um, I'm using this auto glass stuff, but just like some Windex would work. And then I'm just cleaning the end of this. Get whatever is on there off. You can see it's a little bit dirty. And then spraying a little bit more and cleaning off the suction cup. Then just putting a tiny bit of valve lapping paste around the outside of the valve. Just that, you don't need any more than that. And then the last thing that I do before I start is put just a little bit of oil on here to help it spin inside the valve guide so that we don't mess up anything inside the valve guide. I'm just using a little bit of motor oil on a toothpick to spread it on here. You wanna make sure that you're using the valves that originally came from that location. You don't wanna mix up your valves. Place this on the center of the valve, or as close as I can get. And start spinning like that. And then what I like to do is lift the valve up from underneath while I'm doing this to lift some pressure off of it. You don't really want to press down on the valve, you want to let the, the grinding paste do all the work. And you can kind of hear it as you go. The sound of the grinding will start to get higher pitch once you finish. So I've been doing this for about five minutes now and you can hear that it's getting a little bit more high pitch. You can hear it's not making the same kind of noises anymore. So now I'm gonna wipe it down and check it. So if you take a look here, you can see on this side maybe, there's still a tiny bit of pitting. So we're gonna go one more time. But on the actual engine itself, here's one that we just did, it looks pretty good. There's not really any pitting left in there. Like on this one, you see all that pitting. On this one, it's all gone. So we're gonna go one more time with it, and then we're gonna move on to the next cell. All right, so I got this one done now. If we take a look, you can see there's like one little pit right there. And that's really it. So that's about the best that it's gonna get though. I mean, I could go more at it, but it's not really gonna make that big of a difference. So we're just gonna go ahead and be done with this one now. I don't wanna to take too much off of the block here. So when I finish each one, I just stick it back in where it came from. That way I don't get them confused. I'm gonna work on this one next, and then uh, these two. And then I just need to do these ones, and then we'll be all done.
So now I'm just gonna time lapse the rest of these. I'm done with the games we're playing. I'm over it. So I had to let you go. So I finished lapping all of the valves and um, then I power washed this whole thing. The bummer is I didn't really realize that the valve guides are steel so they're rusting a little bit. So I'm going to take a Q-tip with some oil and try to clean them out. Um, I already took this valve stem seal off. I'm also going to try to clean the rust off of these bolts here. But I'm taking the rest of the valve stem seals off right now and then I'm going to put some new ones on. I have some uh, Super Tech valve stem seals. So you can see they're marked intake and exhaust, and I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these on. These are kind of a pain to take off. I use a combination of channel locks and a screwdriver to pry. These are really easy to put on. You just use a 10 millimeter socket and uh, just press them down. Okay, so I didn't really need this for much. I used my thumb for most of them, uh, but all of those are on now. We're gonna go ahead and put the valves in from the other side. To do that, we're just gonna oil the, the stem of the valve when we put it in so it doesn't mess up our new seals. And then we'll flip this back over and start putting the valve springs on. Actually, we're gonna put the valve springs on in retainers and keepers uh, with, with putting the valves in. So we're gonna do one at a time I'm going to put the valve in, and then I'm going to put the spring and retainer on with the keepers, one at a time. So as you can see, all of these are on now. So I did this whole entire thing, removing these and installing them without losing any keepers, which is really surprising, except for the fact that I did lose a keeper, but not while I was installing or uninstalling them. I found a small hole in the side of this bag right here, and one of the keepers must have fallen out because there was one missing keeper from here. Luckily, last time I did this job, I lost a retainer and some keepers, and I had to go get some from the junkyard, and I grabbed extra. So I had an extra keeper laying around downstairs that I ended up putting on here. So make sure that if you're ever doing this job, you do have extra keepers laying around. Preferably, if you're using factory springs and retainers, have extra retainers as well, because there's a good chance you might lose a retainer. If you have aftermarket, they don't give you any extras, so be super careful. But anyway, these are all installed now. The next thing that we gotta do is put the cam in here. I'm gonna put some assembly lube in, set the cam in, and then I'm gonna start working on cleaning this up, because this is absolutely filthy. So uh, that's what you'll see next, is a combination of setting the cam in here, and cleaning this up. Okay, so the head's all together now, and I have the timing set at top dead center. And then over here on the engine, we have this set at top dead center as well. So the timing's close enough to put the head on. So we're going to go ahead and stick the head studs in here, put the head gasket on, and then put the head on. 
and torque it down. I'm not gonna put any copper spray on the head gasket and I'm going to follow these instructions and to torque it down to 60 foot pounds. I'll do some research later and see if I should torque it down a little bit more for the turbo stuff, uh, but we're gonna set it at that for now. Okay, so the camera died while I was torquing the head down, but I got everything torqued down exactly how I wanted. This is where I'm gonna end this video. In the next video, we go ahead and put the engine in the car. If you wanna make sure that you don't miss that, go ahead and click the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, feel free to share it, give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out. But I don't feel like being here all day, and I also don't care what you have to say about it. I should edit that out of the video. That's mean. Hey, yeah. Also, my super hot girlfriend's here. Hey. Hi, babe. Hi. Don't worry, I'm not going to put you in it.